In this video, I'm going to be going over how to fly the helicopter in Battlefield 2042, starting it off with basic flight mechanics and things you need to know, to moving on to more advanced flight mechanics, including tips and tricks on certain maneuverable controls that you're going to want to apply, as well as things to look for and things that you should do on the battlefield to maintain a high kill streak. I've got timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead. For those of you that already know how to fly and want to see some more advanced tricks that you should apply, to start it off, we're going to be looking at the HUD. There is a lot of HUD elements here, although I'm going to mention only the most important ones that you need to know. On the left, we've got the speed of the helicopter, and this is important, and I'll dive into more details on this a little bit later. And on the right, we've got the altitude of the helicopter, as well as on the bottom right, we've got our arsenal, but a small little teal bar that indicates our health. You'll notice it goes down as we take damage. But more importantly, we've got a HUD of the helicopter on the bottom. This lets you know what part of the helicopter is damaged and can also indicate to you what direction the damage is coming from. For example, my propellers took damage here. This indicates to me that the damage is coming from above and therefore an enemy is above me. Another important thing to note is the minimap. This lets you know where the threat is and where you should be on the battlefield. You also notice on the crosshair for the little bird, there is a circle of dots. This indicates how long you have before the gun overheats. But furthermore, anytime you are using rockets, whether it be lock-on or in the Apache, you'll notice that there is a bunch of dots. These are the rockets themselves, and you'll notice them going up as you regain those rockets. You'll also see that in the bottom right HUD, those rockets coming back. Now it's important to understand the physics of the helicopter. The propellers are providing a force downwards, indicated by the red arrow. This force allows for the helicopter to move in the opposite direction. That's indicated by the green arrow. Therefore, the way you tilt the helicopter, it will move in the direction of that green arrow. Another way to look at it is how the tail of the helicopter is tilted. If the tail is tilted up, the helicopter will move forward. With that in mind, any direction you put the helicopter in, knowing this force, you can maneuver in the direction you want to go. Now it's time to look at the controls of the helicopter. I use a keyboard and mouse to fly, so everything I'm about to explain is for the keyboard and mouse but you can apply these techniques and things I'm about to mention for the controller. And later on, I'll go into what's called the momentum, which is slightly different for those of you that use a controller. So watch this part and you'll get what I'm getting at. I've got a bit of a keyboard layout shown here. The W key is to accelerate. This lets you go up. You'll notice that if you hold it down, the speed of the helicopter increases. And when I let go, it starts to instantly decrease without me even having to press S to decelerate. The helicopter also goes into an auto hover mode. So when you reach a certain altitude and you let go of all controls on your keyboard, the helicopter automatically hovers. Now, pressing the A key lets me turn left while pressing the D key lets me turn right. As for the mouse, if I move the mouse forward, that tilts the nose down, bringing the tail up, meaning I will move forward now. This is also true for the inverse of this, meaning if I pull the mouse down, the tail will tilt down and bring the helicopter back. You can obviously speed this up by accelerating. However, an important thing to know about this is I am using the inverted flight control. So for those of you guys that want to change it to not be inverted, you can do that in the options of the controls. There's a little switch. You have the global option or the in-pilot option. I recommend doing it to the in-pilot option. Now, if I move my mouse to the right, I will roll the helicopter to the right, and if I move it to left, it rolls to the left. Keep in mind that if you change the inverted flight on or off, it only affects the tilt and not the roll. You now have the basic flight controls for flying the helicopter, and I recommend that you get in and just practice flying around with that and see how you feel for the helicopter, and it lets you also know if you'd rather the inverted flight on or off. I also use a lot of third person and first person depending on the type of combat situation I'm going for. Third person allows me to see my peripheral a little more and understand what I'm going into. And first person allows me to get a little bit more accurate as I have a better view of the target. In order to switch between first and third person, you're going to want to press the C key on the keyboard. You'll also notice that if I right click while aiming on a target, I zoom in on that target. This can also be done in third person, but it gives more of a cinematic view on the side of the helicopter. Now we're going to be looking at a little bit more advanced flight techniques for the helicopter, and that's looking at momentum. The best way to understand momentum is similarly to a car. When you let go of the gas on a car, the car doesn't just instantly stop. It continues on in the direction it's going. This applies to the helicopter in any direction you're applying to move. For example, if you're holding your A key to turn left, 
once you let go of that key, it doesn't just instantly stop, it's got a little bit of momentum. This is important to know because you're going to be aiming with your A and D key to turn your aim left or right. So what I recommend is you tap your A key or your D key to maintain on target. Never hold it down unless you absolutely have to, otherwise you're gonna be aiming all over the place. Now we're gonna be looking at the barrel roll of the helicopter. If you're doing this with a mouse, this is gonna be a lot harder because you're gonna to have to continuously keep swiping. The momentum of the barrel roll is not that strong. It tends to stop really quickly as soon as it loses an input. This is where having a controller is actually a lot easier to do barrel rolls with. However, we can counter this on the keyboard and mouse. If you go to your controls, there's actually an option for changing your barrel roll. I chose Q to barrel roll left and E to barrel roll right. Therefore, when I'm in the air and want to barrel roll, I can just hold the key of the direction I want to barrel roll in and it will continuously barrel roll in that direction. Now, the reason I chose my Q and E key is they're right above my A and D key, allowing me to both turn and barrel roll in that direction. This is what's called a sharp turn. If you are flying the helicopter and now hold down both Q and A, you are able to make a really sharp turn in that direction. So definitely apply these controls when you're flying the helicopter on a keyboard and mouse. You can also apply what I mentioned earlier by tapping these keys in order to help you maintain on target. So ultimately, what you're doing by applying these Q and E keys to roll, you have maximum roll by using the keyboard, whereas on the mouse, you can fine tune the roll you're looking for. Now let's look at a technique for taking out targets on the ground without having to strafe past them going forward and back. You can do what's simply called a circle strafe. In order to circle strafe to the right, you're going to want to roll the helicopter to the right while tapping the left key. So in my case, I'm rolling with the mouse to the right while tapping the A key in order to maintain on target. It's really important you tap here, and the only time you need to hold it down is when you're undershooting. However, there are gonna be times when you can't maintain, and using the roll with the turn on the keyboard that we mentioned earlier will help you make a sharper turn to maintain on target. This does take a little bit of practice because you do have to play with the accelerate as well where you have to tap it. So I recommend you get in and practice doing this on some trees and get the hang of how you maneuver. Any of the weapons you use in the helicopter are a projectile, so there is a time between when you shoot to when it gets to the target. So there's a couple of things you're gonna to have to compensate for. The first thing, of course, is bullet drop. So you have to lead a little bit above the target, but this is also dependent on how far you are from the target. The second thing is the direction you're traveling and the direction they're traveling. Since there's a time it takes to get to the target, you might have to lead ahead of the target depending on which way they're going and you're going. Ultimately, this bit of info I gave you takes practice to get really good at, but just know that you will have to lead no matter how you're moving and how the target is moving. And the last thing I want to mention is pay attention to your flares. You only have one flare that you can use at a time, so watch for it in the HUD and gauge how far you are from the target, where that threat is coming from, and maneuver yourself so that you're not always getting locked on and getting destroyed. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please do drop a like down below because that really does help me out. And let me know in the comments if you want me to come out with more advanced flight techniques and things that you should be looking for on specific maps. And if you haven't already, please do click that subscribe button and turn the bell on to be notified when I come out with more Battlefield content.